Okay, everybody. Well, welcome to our first uh, navigational Zoom. Um, really excited to be with you, uh, the members of Christ Lutheran, whether it's uh, here in person or uh, as you're viewing the uh, recording uh, at some other time. Uh, let me just start by having a prayer, and then I'll kind of review what, um, what, what the navigation call is and how we will engage it. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So let's begin. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus. Uh, during these days of Lent, we are once again focused on his life, death, and resurrection for the forgiveness of our sins. We know, though, Lord, that we are not only to be beneficiaries of this amazing grace, but also agents of it to the people that you have already placed around us, our family, our church family, but even more so the people that ha are living without your, uh, your grace and truth. Lord, bless our conversation today that we might gain the insights we need from you through our conversation with one another so that we may take our next steps in being able to join your son Jesus on his mission. This we pray in his name, amen. Well, very good. Well. It is indeed uh, good to be with you, and the, the, the reason we have the navigation calls is so that we can talk about what actually happened over the past month. Uh, navigation Zooms are not about you know, me delivering more content uh, for teaching, but really is all about uh, sorting out the experiences we've had, telling the stories of what's been going on, as we have engaged in those uh, three uh, uh, discovery assignments. Uh, the first one, uh, you might remember, is seek the kingdom. Uh, we want to start becoming more intentional and consistent, going into our day, anticipating that God is going to be up to something, that Jesus is readying people. Uh, so that, that's the first assignment. We want to talk about how's that been going. Uh, number two is to love your neighbor. And uh, of course, we uh, define that as meeting our neighbor if we haven't done that already, spending unhurried time with our neighbor so we get to know them. And the ultimate goal, of course, is to find that one person or two that uh, are open to a relationship, a friendship with us so that we can start to invest in someone that needs the love and truth of Jesus. So seek the kingdom, love our neighbor, and then number three was uh, take 10 conversations. That, that is a way for us to spur one another on to love and good works and to encourage each other, like it says in Hebrews chapter 10. And the take 10 conversation is just about, you know, around our dinner table at home and certainly around uh, the groups that meet under the umbrella of Christ Lutheran in Warren, taking 10 minutes uh, and being able to say, hey, How's it going with those uh, first two assignments? How, what, what have you been seeing? What have you been hearing? What's God been up to? Who are you meeting? How are those conversations going? What good are you able to do? And by uh, talking about that regularly uh, in our groups and in our families, uh, our, our intentionality goes up, our, uh, our, our level of awareness goes up, and of course, we begin to have more and more experiences um, and, and our confidence goes up, uh, not so much in ourselves, but in Jesus. And uh, those are very, very important gifts uh, for us to be sharing back and forth. So that's the reason we get together uh, once a month. We want to find out how's it going. How's it going individually as you're seeking to uh, do those three assignments? And then how's it going congregationally uh, so that we can uh, uh, fine tune anything we need to fine tune? Uh, coach you up on anything that maybe we need a little coaching on, and then last but not least, be able to look at what's ahead. Uh, what what can we look forward to during the next month or two, uh, and prepare for as as uh, a congregation, and as leaders of the congregation. So that's a that's a quick run through. Uh, before I go on, any questions about uh, what a navigation call is or what we'll be talking about? Any questions? Nobody here. Okay. Well, very good. Yeah, I can't see faces anymore. Uh, I just can see my face. 
which is a little disconcerting. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so please jump in because I, I don't see faces, but if you have anything to share, then just uh, jump in. We'd love to hear from you. So let's just get started. What? Let's look at those uh, three assignments and uh, how's that going for you uh, personally? Uh, or what's been going on over the last month or so? Uh, have you been able to uh, have more of a sense of, of awareness as you go out, um, kind of uh, anticipating that God will be up to something? Uh, or have you, have you had opportunity to meet a neighbor, talk with a neighbor, um, uh, whether that's somebody that you live near or whether that's just somebody maybe at the grocery store? Uh, talk with me a little bit about those uh, experiences or stories. Anybody got one? Anybody? Just that I'm trying to be more aware of people uh, when I see them. I think about that more. Uh, the person that um, was a checkout at uh, the dollar store, I thought about her, you know, and just people that um, I see, you know, more often. So I am kind of thinking along those lines. Fantastic. Uh, and what is your name, just for the sake of everybody? Esther. Esther. Well, very good, Esther. And I, and I tell you what, you, you used, uh, you know, the word just, just this. But that's a huge uh, learning and step forward to go out uh, with that sense of, you know what, God's uh, on the loose out here. And the people that are around me are, uh, they, they are important. They're valuable whether they're uh, you know, somebody at a, a, a dollar store or whether they're you know, somebody that uh, lives near uh, next door to us. So I wanna really applaud you and anybody else that is starting to build that, that sense of intentionality about being aware. Um, you know, one of the things we hear over and over again as we work with so many churches is that uh, people, when they do start to have that, um, like you're talking about, Esther, now all of a sudden they're in a much better position to eventually, uh, you know, recognize an opportunity and respond to it. But obviously we can't recognize it if we aren't even looking for it. So that's a huge first step. So well done. Glenn, give her a high five, if you would, please. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I was talking with uh, uh, a, a lady um, probably about your still stage of life, Esther. Uh, she lives in Fort Wayne, and um, she was um, had gone through our training and uh, uh, realized that every day she she went to the quick trip for a cup of coffee, or most every day, and that the same lady was usually behind the counter. And um, and and the really cool thing is that um, you know one day uh, her name is Judy. She decided, you know, it's time for me to meet this person. I, I recognize them. She's even started to pray for her, but didn't know her name. And so she said, she introduced herself and the lady shared with her her name. And, uh, and then that, that put, put them in another level of, of, of uh, interaction, right? Now she greeted her by name. They had a little conversation. She'd say, how's it been going? Um, this progressed until she even found out that the woman was about to have a medical procedure, and uh, and Judy said, "Well, I tell you what, uh, you don't know this, but I pray for you almost every day. Would you mind if I prayed for you about your uh, your medical procedure?" And the woman, her eyes filled up with tears. She was so appreciative, and uh, again, you know, it it just all it took was realizing there's a there's a real person here who has a life, who has a story that Jesus loves, um, and as we uh, have opportunity to meet people, uh, be curious about them, care for them. All of a sudden, we're in position to join Jesus on his mission. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it, it's, it's, a, it's a simple thing, but a very important thing for us to start to live with that awareness and to notice the people that are already around us. Um, does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Yeah. I imagine there are others of you that also are starting to live with more awareness. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, my name is Jim. Um, 
I work in uh, mental health and I've worked with a lot of patients and um, I had retired from teaching uh, in 2010. Uh, I still did teaching and then in 2018 I was able to, I went, decided to move into counseling, mental health counseling. And I didn't know. I, I just asked God what to do, you know. Yeah. So um, he opened the door and I walked through it and, and it was like 2018. And um, I remember a few months went by and uh, I woke up in the middle of the night and it wasn't to, like to pray or, 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 or think about. Um, it, was, it was unusual for me. And I sat at the side of the bed and every, it was like, okay, why am I sitting here? And there's like no thinking going on. <laughs> and um, I was just standing still, I guess, in my mind and waiting for him. And all of a sudden in the back of my mind, something started to surface and I said, oh, dear God, thank you very much for giving me the job. And I stopped and I was like, just being quiet. And there was nothing again for the five minutes. So I guess maybe it was five minutes each time, but it seemed like, like an hour to me because, you know, I have no patience. <laughs> and, um, and all of a sudden I felt something thought forming in my mind and I said, Dear God, is there a job behind the job? And it was like, boom, this thought, powerful thought went in, through my mind and it was, win over as many as you can. So I found out through the process over these years, just how bad off I was. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm helping the patients, I'm thinking, hmm, Wow. So don't let it overwhelm you. That which overwhelms you masters you, whether it's conditions, circumstances, or whatnot. And so, you know, I had people that were suicidal. I had people that had lots of problems. Um, and um, God helped me with them to, to, to help them. But all along, I'm thinking to myself, hmm, or later afterwards, like, huh, Remember that in the conversation. So I guess what I'm I'm asked I've asked them to do is make me seek the kingdom of heaven first. And this morning that was my thing on my mind that he put in my mind. Like, okay, your heart and your mind has to be in the right place. So that means more conscious of him all the time throughout the day. So we make use of the opportunities or we're allowed the opportunities because we're thinking about what he wants and not about what we want. Anyway. Nope, that's very well said, Jim. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, that's really just reflecting what uh, Jesus said of his father, right? I'm, I'm here not to please myself, but to please him who sent me and, um, and, 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 you know, and literally has given us, the places that we live and work and have our being, right? Yeah. And uh, you, you, your, your reflection is, is, uh, is a great reminder to all of us. Um, the, I, I think, you know, the, the part that we can help each other with is exactly what you've just done. And that's part of why the take tens or so and uh, conversations are so helpful is because, you know, once I start to live with a sense of trust, faith, that God has me where I am, it's not by luck or bad luck, uh, but his, his, uh, his placing of us, and that the, the things that happen around me, uh, again, are not just uh, random and happenstance, but uh, if I start to see those things, I can know that that's part of the good the Father's prepared in advance for me to do. And I'm sure, Jim, you live this. The rest of us can also uh, be reminded of this, that we can't fix people, right? right. Um, you, you, can't, you can't fix those dear people, but you can love them. You can listen to them. You can help win them over to a way of thinking uh, that, that would be beneficial to them. And that's the same that we don't have to uh, carry the burden 
of having to you know save people, convert people, fix people. Uh, our our primary uh, role in joining Jesus is noticing people, loving people, you know, serving people as we give, as as we have opportunity. And uh, of course, um, you know, we want to do that out of a sense of fullness, not out of a sense of I I have to. You know, I, I have to is a pretty low motivator, right? Yes. But uh, out of the abundance of what I have received from God, I can now, you know, offer a little bit to others. So um, I, I apologize for going on. I should have just said amen to what you said, uh, Jim. Uh, oh, <laughs> you did fine. Thank you. Very good. Other other uh, thoughts or reflections on what's been going on the last few weeks as we have sought to gain more experience with those three assignments, seeking the kingdom, uh, loving our neighbor. Uh, and, and in a little bit, we'll talk a little bit about the, the spurring each other on with the take 10 conversations, but let's focus right now. Anybody have uh, an opportunity to interact with people that maybe are just, you know, outside of your usual circle? You know, we, we, we're interacting with family and church folks and you know, uh, friends that we already know and love, but have we had that opportunity to take that one uh, extra step with somebody? I have done, uh, in a small way, when we've gotten uh, a lot of snow lately, I've used my snowblower and I went and crossed the street and I saw people out there showing their walks and stuff like that. I went over there and just started helping them and stuff like that. I mean, I, I know our neighbors by face, but I'm not one that has really got over the years to got to know them because I, uh, you know, working at the sheriff's office for all those years and everything and weird hours and stuff. So I never really got to know a lot of my neighbors. So I know their faces, but now I've stepped out doing things, you know, uh, and stuff just out of the kindness, you know, to show them, hey, I'm, I'm here and, you know, helping you out and stuff like that. So I've, I've been doing that. The other side is that, I mean, I, when I was at work, working inside the jail facility and stuff, I used to have conversations with our clientele and stuff about God and the Bible. I, I had to be careful because being uh, an employee, I could not force things onto them. But if I saw them out there reading their Bible or talk, discussion things, stuff like that, then I would interact and interject because it wasn't me forcing, they were already in that area talking and stuff and then I would interject with that stuff. Well, I retired like eight years ago, so I haven't had those things, uh, conversations going on and stuff anymore. So and, uh, so doing, reaching out to neighbors and stuff and then formulating some additional thoughts of how to interact with some additional people, more uh, talk and stuff like that. I mean, like some of my coworkers online at my one of my retired part-time jobs, you know, I've been, you know, they've been talking about things going on and stuff. I've been saying, hey, would you like me to pray for you and stuff like that? Yeah. I haven't actually prayed with them through online, you know, but I said, I will pray for you. Yeah. Um, no, and that that's a wonderful gift, right? To know somebody cares enough for me to pray. Um, and, and that's how people see it. They see it as a, a great act of kindness, a, a gift. Um, so that is really cool. Um, yeah, that, that, and, and I think uh, the, what I would really circle for everybody uh, as we hear uh, Glenn's comments is that many times in transitions, right? Uh, like you said, you, you, tra you retired eight years ago. You know, now that we have a different setting, we sometimes have to find out new ways of, of interacting with people than we did before. And, um, and so being, you know, just even thinking that through again, so that you can, you know, uh, interact, like you said, you know, uh, snow blowing some snow, and maybe when it, you know, finally starts to be spring and summer, being able to, you know, introduce yourself in a, in a, in a, in a way that, you know, maybe you haven't been able to. And, a lot of times, you know, I know what you mean. You know people by faces, but you don't know them uh, by name. And I, I, uh, I, even after I've met people, a lot of times I'll forget their names, right? Anybody else have that problem? Um, and so what I've learned to do is uh, most of the time, you know what? They forgot my name too. <laughs> and so 
I just go in and, and, and I just say, hey, my name is Greg. Um, you know, remind me of your name. And, uh, and, and pretty soon, if, if uh, I do that enough, then I, I start to remember. Plus, I started learning down the good, se- learning the good sense of writing down um, people's, uh, my neighbor's names, right? Uh, so that's, that's always a helpful little hint. But yeah, I've, I've learned uh, that people really appreciate when you, 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 you know, take the lead and say, hey, in your case, hey, I'm Glenn. I live over there. Uh, what's your name? And uh, people respond very well to that. So, uh, and again, it's, it's easier to have those uh, uh, conversations when you do know a name, right? As simple as that is, it's really cool to be able to call people by name, wave to them, uh, maybe, you know, uh, walk over, have a catch up with them a little bit. Uh, so the next, next winter when you're snow blowing, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll be well on your way to friendship with a lot of those people. Um, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I saw someone, oh, go ahead, Glenn. And one additional thing I've been doing is that like when I am at stores and stuff like that, I see somebody wearing a cross or something like that. I'll comment and say, hey, that's a very nice looking cross and stuff. So I, I let that person know, hey, I noticed that you're wearing this, you know, as a faith symbol and stuff. And, you know, it's like my way of appreciating that. Yeah. You, know, a lot of people you got yourself, know, you got yourself a teammate there, right? Yes. <laughs> very good. Well, I can't tell if it's a, a red sweatshirt, but there, the lady that is right behind you was was uh, going to say something, I think. My name is Lynn. Lynn, okay. Hi, Lynn. Hi. And um, I, I have been working with the Bless Every Home um, prayer list that I'm working on, and I live in a cooperative. So it doesn't show me houses. It doesn't t- tells me I live in the middle of the street, but <laughs> <laughs> and but it gives me forty people to pray for. Wow! And does it five five people at a time? So I had five this morning that I prayed for. One of the people that I prayed for was a person who has my address on the other other end of the cooperative. Huh. So we have the same number, but one is north and one is south. So I. I get her packages, she gets mine. And uh, just about two weeks ago, um, I got one of her packages and I decided to go over and meet her. And so that's, that was one of the people that I prayed for this morning then too. You know, I put her on my list. You can add to that list. That's and right. I had some people that I took off because I checked with my manager at the cooperative and she said, no, they moved, they moved. So, and I'm, I'm, I really enjoy using that. And the other thing um, that happened too, I, uh, I retired 14 years ago from teaching, um, but I found that I like to teach. <laughs> and consequently, my housekeeper is now my student. And I have also, I found that about 2015, I was teaching a Chinese student English and then I, was ended up talking to her about uh, Jesus and God and and what was going on within her life, you know. So uh, that's exciting. Is still going in mine. <laughs> yeah, no, and I tell you what, um, and, and not not to always be thinking about the next thing because what you just shared is really important and a great first step uh, in in uh, in your in your you know uh, training of joining Jesus on His mission, right? But um, my my daughter, who now is 23, my youngest daughter, was at the University of Texas and was in a ministry that intera- that interacted with international students, and many of them, of course, wanted to learn uh, better English skills, right? Uh, but they also were interested in, you know, what what American Christians believed, uh, and and so what began with simple, you know, academic curiosity, if you will, often led to someone coming to faith in Jesus, because they just had never heard the good news of God. Uh, so again, not not to uh, make this as uh, a, a prescription for you, Lynn, but if you already enjoy teaching, that might be a cool volunteer uh, opportunity, because I know that there are many English learning students that are 
you know, uh, and, and organizations where you could be with somebody uh, a few times a week. And uh, especially if there's somebody from a non-Christian culture, uh, you know, be able to uh, have those kinds of conversations like you did with your Chinese uh, student a few years ago. So uh, anyway, that's exciting. And, a, and it, it turns out to be a, a, uh, a very natural place for those kinds of conversations to happen. Very cool. Well, it's about 1130 and usually our calls take uh, between 40 and 45 minutes. So let's maybe shift now, not that we're done telling stories because we certainly want to still hear any stories, but I'd also like to hear how's it going starting to have our, our various groups at church do take tens, whether it's our musical rehearsals, our administrative meetings with you know council or elders or what or bible studies or ministry teams of whatever flavor they might be um, have have they been invited to start doing those taking 10 minutes and, and having people share their reflections and stories is that something that's happening at our council meeting uh, we have started doing that uh, the, the last two for the last two months. Very good. I don't know individual groups because I haven't been to the individual groups, but at, at sure. the uh, whole council, we've had usually two to three people will share something. Great. So is the council made up of like committee chairs or are they not? Yes. yes. Okay. So that is a very good forum, Glenn to say, okay, let's model what a take 10 looks like, which you have been doing, right? We do it together. And now they take that and replicate that with their various uh, committees and groups that they're working with, right? And that way you're able to see the ripples go out, if you will, from your uh, facilitating that to them then imitating and replicating that with their groups. And, uh, and eventually we, you know, we need to crawl before we walk, right? But eventually the, what we want is for them to say now, not only do we want to model these when we're together here at church, but then replicate this in your home. You know, if you're, now if you're living by yourself, obviously that's, that's not going to be a, uh, uh, you know, such a, a realistic goal. But if you still have people in your household with you, to be able to have those kinds of conversations. And even people that uh, are living alone can start to have those conversations with other Christians. Kind of like uh, what you were talking about, uh, Glenn. You know, when you start to get to know people, you start to realize there are other Christians out there, whether they are at work or where I live. And uh, uh, one of the things that can happen is that you can talk with them and say, hey, you want to get together every once in a while and talk about what God's up to in our lives and how we can love our neighbors. And you'd be surprised how many folks the light bulb goes on. And they're like, hey, we, we should do that. Anyway, something to think about. Yes. I actually uh, mentioned a couple of times with a couple other people, but with COVID and stuff and secular family members and stuff, the ones that I discuss it with are interested at the moment. But you know, they want to wait a little while uh, longer, but yes, it is something that uh, we each can do. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, it, it, everything in due time. And a lot of times what we'll talk about here isn't something that we have to feel bad that we haven't done or even feel pressure to immediately start doing it, but rather start looking, uh, you know, over the horizon of the next month or two or three at what point could we maybe start to experiment with some of these things? And that's, that's all I was doing there now. Hey, it, the first step is to do it with your leaders. The leaders then can do it with their uh, committees and, and groups. And then, you know, then eventually into the families. Um, but first things first, right? Um, and, you know, what I would encourage is, you know, talking with, you um, you know, even informally with people that are leading, uh, in other words, not just waiting for your next council meeting, but talking with other leaders about what a take 10 is and, uh, and you know, and, 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 you know, maybe even being able to model it with them, 
uh, what a lot of a lot of churches have started doing is they will even do take tens like during Bible classes for, you know, on Sunday morning or uh, even in the church service. Uh, so the, the, the pastor might, you know, have a sermon and then uh, partway through, he might say now, and it's not take 10 minutes, but might be take two minutes, but turn to your neighbor and talk a little bit about, and then he poses a question based off of the, the scripture and the sermon uh, just to get people used to talking with each other about that. So that's something you can think about. I know, um, you know, you guys are in the middle of, of uh, you know, uh, uh, with Pastor Miller and, you know, who's going to be the next pastor, but that might be something that you talk with pastors about if you're interested in, in, uh, in them facilitating that. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. That way it's not a, it's not such a new thing all the time. Now it's so like, oh yeah, we do this. We, we actually talk about how we're following Jesus. We don't just uh, study it. <laughs> in, in corporate too, a full tenants with the, the sermon gets kept out. Of all that. <laughs> Very good. All right. Um, so one last thing. Uh, in uh, another month or so, you know, we have Easter and then we're, we're full into spring. And um, uh, uh, Glenn, I, I guess I'm going to send you some information about what we call party pails. Is that uh, a, a party pail is simply a way to encourage the people of Christ during the spring and summer to maybe have some gatherings with their neighbors, whether it's one neighbor or whether it's a, a block party. And the party pail is just a little fun little gimmick, really. But maybe you get, you know, half a dozen pails. Maybe some of your artsy, craftsy folks decorate them nice and lively. Uh, and, and then you put in maybe some paper, party paper products. Um, maybe they're thematic in some way. Um, but then also maybe a gift card from the local grocery store. But then you have those out in, in uh, the area where people are coming and going. And uh, again, as part of the, of the weekly announcements, uh, it, let people know, hey, uh, take a party pail and, and uh, use it as a way to connect with neighbors, have some fun with neighbors uh, over the next um, couple of weeks. And, uh, and then there's just two rules, and this is all in the email I'll send you, Glenn. The two rules are you have to bring the party pail back so you can restock it, right, for the next people. And number two is to bring your story back. We want to hear the stories of, of what happened. What was something really uh, surprising but good that happened? And then also what's one thing you would do differently if you did it again? And that way everybody's learning from the experiences of, of our, our, our fellow members. And, um, and I know it sounds like goofy and simple, but it actually works. And, uh, and all of a sudden, over the course of a few months, uh, now it's the, it, it becomes normal that the, the people of Christ are, are, you know, intentionally connecting with neighbors, you know, have some fun, have some food, have some conversation. Uh, and now, now, the, now the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the neighborhood is starting to connect in ways that they hadn't before. Uh, and all because you had, you know, Lutherans uh, bringing the goofy party pails home. <laughs> does, that, yeah. does that sound like something y'all might be interested in doing? Yeah, it sounds very interesting, yes. Yeah, I will, I will send you that uh, after we're done here together. Again, something, that's something that's, you know, a good month or two out, but that gives you time to talk with some people, plan out how you want to do that. But, um, the, 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 real, the real gold is when they come back with their stories and then, again, you know, whether it's during announcements, maybe it's right before prayer time, but you take like literally 60 seconds and have someone share the story of what happened. And, uh, and that, that it's just like a, a big take 10, except it doesn't take 10 minutes. It takes a minute. <laughs> All right. Any questions or comments or concerns that you brought to the call today that you were hoping we could address? 
<clears throat> was not something I had pre-planned or anything. Uh, but while I'm sitting here listening, it went through my mind about prayer. And so we, in our prayers, we, there's many reasons for praying. Um, to request, to praise him and to request. And it went through my mind, well, why, what about request? Well, request is showing that, why does he, would he want us to ask? And it's to show that our heart is thinking about others and that mm -hmm. he's changing us and transforming us as we pray too. So I was thinking, um, I'm going to try it. This, uh, it just. A Bible uh, study. So we do that on Sunday in between the two service. We just started it. It's just six sessions to get ready and get it going and see what, but when we're talking there, it, it hit me, okay, well, we did open with prayer and we uh, closed with prayer. Um, uh, someone did the prayers and uh, I'm thinking what passed through my mind was Christ says, I open the door and no man can close it. I shut a door and no man can open it. So maybe open the prayer this Sunday with um, saying, asking him to open doors, opportunities, that he make the opportunity because he knows the beginning of things from the end of things. And what a person might need in that moment that we don't don't know about. And if we've asked him, then he, when you ask, like he says, if you ask for my spirit, I shall give it to you. You will receive. That's so right. Maybe that approach too. So absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. You know, that that's one of the things that, you know, with, with the uh, pastoral transition is something that requires you as leaders to, you know, to, to make, that request of whoever the pastor is, right? But it, it, you know, if if you have a team that's putting together the 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 liturgy and the prayers uh, for each Sunday, I couldn't agree more to uh, start to regularly have in there those kinds of prayers, prayers to open doors, prayers for us to look for that one lost sheep that is nearby, uh, prayers for our neighbors and our neighborhoods that we might be able to bring light and salt, you know, to our neighbors. Uh, those kinds of very simple biblical uh, uh, prayer requests, but that really helps because one, you know, uh, talking about prayer is not the same as praying, right? So we wanna actually pray these things. And number two is that it really helps people to be much more, they go home much more aware of Hey, we just prayed about this today. Let's watch for how God will uh, will answer those prayers. And uh, and again, we come back together for take tens, uh, and we have conversations about you. Let me tell you how God answered that prayer that we prayed last Sunday. So it can really be something that really uh, works for a lot of different reasons. And I appreciate you bringing that up, Jim. I guess we just got to make sure we bring it up to pastor or to the, the liturgy folks. <laughs> well, we also have a thing where we have like a temple talk, usually at the beginning of the service, or sometimes it might be at the end if the person came to hear it at the very beginning you know, for both services, where they discuss and talk about you know, different things about whether the program or something like that. We can help. Maybe you also use some of that time for, for those things too. Oh, that's that's about, exactly about right. Every, uh, Thursday meetings, which we forgot to do uh, this week. So. Yeah, yeah. No, I, and that's where we, you know, the the more we do these things, the more we become aware of opportunities, right? And um, again, uh, misses and mess ups uh, are never failures. That's that's training, right? We learn from those things, and we go, hey, how can we uh, remember and do better next time? Or you know, what are things that now that we've done this a few times, it's like, hey, uh, what, what if we did this? 
And that's what experience uh, helps us to become, you know, the experience helps us to become more aware and see uh, more opportunities. Um, and, uh, you know, that's true in our personal lives and it's true as a congregation as well. So very good. Well, uh, we are at, a, at the end of our time and uh, I wanna honor our time, but I, I'm just letting you know, I was very encouraged. I was a little nervous that, you know, when we, we got together, it was a cu couple of months ago already, and I was a little nervous that maybe we would have to kind of jumpstart everybody, but that's not the case at all. You guys have done some really good work, and I appreciate that and want to commend you for it and, you know, to uh, keep up that good work. And uh, I think what you'll see is as you share these stories and have those take tens, uh, your experiences will give insight and encouragement to other people. And, uh, and, and that's so important because that allows them to, their, for their light bulbs to go on and uh, say, hey, uh, I, I can do what, you know, what Esther's doing or Glenn's doing or Jim's doing or Lynn's doing. And uh, that's, that's, that's multiplication, right? That's what we want to see. So very good. Um, I, I, I need to let you know that, and I'll, I'll guess I'll interact again with you, Glenn, on this. Unfortunately, next uh, month on this Thursday, uh, I ended up having to fly out to my uh, weekend um, training event on Thursday, uh, rather than the usual is Friday. So that's very unusual, but it, it, it does happen to be right on that same day. So I might uh, interact with you, Glenn, Maybe we can move it one Thursday sooner or have it one Thursday later, or maybe we can have it that same week on a different day. Uh, but I do apologize. It was just unavoidable. I, I can understand that. People should understand and respect that. So, yeah. I mean, you can, you can make plans ahead of time, and then there are sometimes things that come up that, you know, we might have to have a funeral here uh, one of those Thursdays, you know, or something. Sure. Well, thank you for your understanding. And the good news is uh, the other dates, you know, as far as I know, uh, are just fine. It just happened to be that quirk in the uh, flight schedule that forced that. So, well, very good. Well, allow me to uh, pray a, a prayer of, of, of thanksgiving and blessing upon you. Can I do that? Please. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that uh, joining Jesus on his mission starts with Jesus. He's the one that has come to us, loved us, saved us, restored us, and now leads the way for us. But Lord, uh, I thank you because you have uh, uh, allowed these dear people to have eyes that are now looking and ears that are now listening and hearts that are ready to respond to what you have set up and what you have prepared in advance. Continue to bless them, Lord, with that uh, sense of, of uh, priority, that as your word says, and as was already quoted earlier, that we would seek first your kingdom so that all these other things might be added as well. Lord, I pray indeed uh, your blessing upon them. Fill them with your spirit. Uh, continue to utilize them. Give them experiences. And, uh, and, and, and give them opportunity, Lord, to share their stories with each other, that people would be encouraged, uh, spurred on to do more in terms of love and good works for the sake of others. Uh, bless all those who are connected with Christ Lutheran Church, and Lord, as they go out into their neighborhoods and their community, uh, may your hand of favor be on them and use them for your purposes, Lord, as they join Jesus on his mission. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.